Hi everyone, Kevin from Total Endurance here. Uh, I just want to put something together, a uh, video around uh, CSS pace and CSS testing. Uh, I came across this, uh, one of my uh, famous monster spreadsheets that I've got quite a few of. Um, but I just wanted to kind of highlight, because I think a lot of people use it, don't necessarily use it well. Um, and even swimmers don't necessarily use the data because what they get is not necessarily what they think it should be um, from the testing. So just for anyone who doesn't know, CSS testing or CSS pace is what we call our critical swim speed. And it's basically working out or calculating the threshold swim speed. So that would be the equivalent to what you do on a bike with your FTP. Uh, this pace is a pace that you should be able to sustain for anywhere between sort of 750 meters, maybe 1500 meters, uh, maybe even up to 1900 meters for kind of uh, people who are, have good strength and good ability to sustain the speed. Um, and then you can use that to kind of target intervals the same way you would use um, bike, uh, bike powers, things like that. Now it does have limitations, certainly for swimming, because for most of us, swimming is not going to be determined or limited by our fitness. It's probably going to be limited more by our ability to maintain good technique. But I think from some of the testing here, it also highlights some of the factors or some of the areas that we can improve. So what we normally do with a CSS test, you do a 400 meter maximal swim, good recovery, then a 200 meter maximal swim. And basically what you're looking at is the, the difference between the two. And there's a kind of calculation that calculates out what your pace would be. And it's basically the difference, kind of the difference between those two paces. It's theoretically calculating the aerobic contribution to speed, which is your 400 meter, so it's about your VO2 max speed, um, and the 200 meter, which theoretically should be anaerobic in nature. Um, and it's kind of calculating the kind of change between those two, which gives us a threshold swim speed, um, which we get. So in just for example, in this bit here, this is the kind of numbers and the times that we'd give people um, from that. And there's quite a big range here. I think there's like 120 right the way up to like 230 um, for this particular test. This is from about 2018. Um, but the limit in that, I think, sometimes is that you just do the four and the two. You don't necessarily see what happened during the test. How well was it paced? Is pacing an issue for swimmers? And I think we used to find when we did this is that probably 90% of swimmers that pacing is the biggest limiter. And that causes them to lose form and lose fatigue. And they get fatigued mainly because they go out too hard. They just get tired. So what we did to improve that, put this together, the spreadsheet. Now, this isn't my own work. I did uh, take some of this from what Swim Smooth. Um, swim smooth used to do and they had something similar um, and just kind of built a spreadsheet uh, from that but basically what we did during the test for this particular test in 2018 we basically took the splits for every 50 meters so some swimmers were timing while others swam um, and we took a note of everybody's 50 meter split and then compiled it into this uh, spreadsheet here so we've got quite a lot of data in here and then from that this spreadsheet could kind of look at how they swam the 400 and the 200 and what we're really interested in is what is the what pace did they start the 400 meter at? So this column A uh, basically gives us the first 100 meter pace. Um, we've then got 400 meter pace. We've then got their average sort of pace for the 400. And also then what was their time for the last 300 meters of the 400? And what was the average pace of that? So that's in column E here. And basically then what we want to look at is what was the drop off between the first 100 and the average pace for the last 300? Because generally, once you start to slow down, you can kind of hold it. Uh, people were still slowing down, but the drop-off really happened after that first 50, first 100. And then we basically could categorize those swimmers in a pacing. Um, there's a little bit of a column down here. So basically, less than two seconds is pretty good, um, all the way up to yeah more than 13 seconds. And yeah, you need to work on your pacing. And you can kind of see there's not very many greens. Uh, yeah, the ones at the bottom are, are not data. But yeah, there's like one person green. Um, who's got good pacing, um, whereas everyone else probably needs to improve it. Now, yellow's okay, pretty good, probably, I'd say, still better than most. Um, but you can see the difference in some of them. You know, there's like, so the grey ones here, 14 seconds. So that's saying that that swimmer, so they went out at 131 per 100 metre pace, but they averaged for the last 300 metres, 145. So they lost 14 seconds per 100. That's huge. That's, that is a, a huge difference in pace. Um, and it's probably their limiting factor more than their necessarily swim ability. And their CSS pace is going to be impacted by that more than they realise. Um, and then also from that, what we could look at, which I think is more interesting, maybe some highlight it, is the distance between, behind their virtual self. So that looks at 
how much further in front would they have been if they'd maintained the pace? So if they, for example, the first swimmer here started at 148, they average 155 for the back end, they were going to be about 18 meters behind themselves. So that's saying that if someone in, say, for example, the next lane set off at 148, the same as them, through the first 100, neck and neck, no, dis no difference between the two, but by the end of the 400 meters, uh, the swimmer who maintained it is going to be 18 meters, which is almost a length in front of them. And there's a few here, 42 meters. It's nearly, you know, they're almost going to get lapped. So you, you were neck and neck with them for the first 100 meters, and then they almost come, uh, overtake you again for 50 meters by the end of the 400. So in 300 meters, you almost lose 50. Or, you know, 40 meters is huge. Um, and I think we did see some pretty big ones. Yeah, there's another 42 um, yeah, 40 meters. These are the people that really need to work. Yeah, there's someone literally almost 50 meters. Um, so there's some big things. Some of these, you know, eight meters is pretty small. 10 meters is still pretty good. You know, five meters is pretty much just the flags. Um, very, very small. But basically meaning that they are dropping off so much um, in that 400. They're just getting fatigued because they've gone out so hard. And that is going to impact the time that they get for the 400 because they're going to slow down too much more than they said necessarily should just because of that first uh, first hundred and I think in a lot of cases it's the first 50 that's the biggest issue now when you do this in a club environment it's hard because there's a competitiveness of it um, and everybody just gets kind of caught up and they go out that little bit too hard uh, very rarely do you see people go off too conservative in, in a 400 meter time it's usually the other way around they go off too zealous and uh, pay the price for it but yeah, we could then look at the difference between the 200. Again, the 200 meter pay, and you can see the difference, generally better, mainly because the 200 meters is obviously less distance. So if you go out a little bit faster, then you don't pay as much for it, or you can kind of hang on um, from that. So yeah, we tend to see the pacing of 200 meters better um, from that. And then from that, we get our CSS pace, which is basically, again, just accounting for 400 and 200. But then if we can look at how well they pace overall, so we can look at, again, these on the right-hand column here, um, the difference here, that's then anything that's gray, red, orange, I would say as well, is probably being more limited. You can see the numbers of it is mainly limited by their pacing more than their actual speed. So they can swim probably reasonably well, but because they're swimming the first part too hard, they're actually slowing down too much. And that's what's kind of probably causing them to have a slightly slower CSS pace. Um, but also true to that as well, which I think is interesting that people don't usually look at, and certainly in clubs, it's necessarily quite hard to do, but it's what's the difference between a swimmer's 400 and 200 and what does it tell us? So think of it in sense that the first, if your 200 meter pace is significantly faster than your 400, that's basically telling us that anaerobically, sprintability, if you like, is better than our endurance. So we're better at going really fast for short periods of time than we are at sustaining a pace for a long period or a longer period of time, which then tells us that and where we'll get a slightly slower CSS for those people because their anaerobic system is slightly stronger. So their anaerobic system is providing slightly more energy than the aerobic system would. We tend to see that they need to slow down. So their CSS will come back slower. They're usually the ones that, um, hate using CSS because they get a pace slower than what they should and what they can swim. But the issue for them is that their uh, aerobic aerobic endurance is the thing limiting them. So by slowing down and getting better at sustaining a pace, their endurance will improve quite quickly. They're ones that can usually improve really quickly if you can get them to slow down initially um, from that. And they're usually the people that if you're doing 50s, 100s, again, 200s, they can get away with it. They can swim quick for 200. And if you give them enough recovery, they'll be able to keep it going, but they're not improving their aerobic endurance. They're the ones that you'll tend to find never are never able to swim at CSS pace um, or never able to sustain CSS pace because the aerobic part of it's the thing that limits them. So they'll maybe get a CSS of, let's just say, two minutes. They'll go out and they'll do their hundreds at 140, 145, 150 pace. But then when it comes to doing a, a thousand meters or even maybe say 1500 meters in a standard distance try, they are swimming that or slower. They'll be swimming probably two minutes, 210. But the lane of people that they swim against, they're, if they're better endurance swimmers, are two, three, four minutes faster because their endurance is better. So I think for those people, it's getting them slow down a little bit, getting better at maintaining pace, gradually extending how long they can maintain the pace for. And then they'll be able to swim 145, 150 pace, and it will be sustainable rather than using the anaerobic system to swim that.
Conversely to that, that you see uh, the people who are, I would say, the more the diesel engines, um, what you tend to see with them is that their four and two times don't differ massively. So in terms of the spreadsheet, the percentage here would be quite close to 50%. It's a better problem to have than the other way around. Um, but for them, the thing they lack is speed. They, they don't have a change in pace. They're the people that tend to find that they swim one speed all the time. If they go faster, they don't go faster. Um, if they go slow, they swim the same speed as if they go fast. Now, that's quite hard to change with swimming because of the technical component of swimming. But they're ones that are probably going to get more gain from doing some slightly faster intervals. They're the ones that should probably do more of the fifth, fast 50s, fast 100s, um, more than the kind of anaerobic kind of strength uh, athletes to now. Um, the problem with them is they don't probably don't like doing it. They tend to go like going in and swimming comfortably. Um, so there's a little bit of kind of, I guess, coaxing them into being able to and, and want to do some of that faster stuff. But I think, as I said, with swimming pretty much all the way through is that swimming isn't necessarily physiologically determined. Your fitness gain is so small, but your technique gain is, is the issue. So even if you're using CSS, say it has benefit, still has some limitations like all things with testing. But I would certainly advocate if you can um, find the speed that you can swim and sustain good technique, that's what you want to be, get practice, uh, do, do more often and get more time spent doing. Rather than swimming so fast, and likewise, if your pacing's your issue, get very, very a little bit slower, but it, being able to maintain technique, potentially that's the thing that's going to improve your swimming. So I would say to a lot of swimmers, if, if pacing, if you look like a lot of the people on this spreadsheet here, where pacing's your limiter, get yourself a, a tempo trainer um, and set it to maybe CSS or slightly faster than your, or slightly slower than your CSS, sorry. And get more time swimming that pace but while you're swimming when it's a little bit easier you're not chasing it you're not trying to hang on to the person in front's feet anymore you're just swimming at a pace and you can then focus on what you're doing with technique um, and i would even advocate doing short intervals still even if you're swimming at say two minutes per hundred working on css stuff keep the reps relatively short swim a good 50 maybe swimming at a good pace small reset small recovery 5 10 maybe 15 seconds Go back and think about technique while you're swimming a little bit faster. Use the paddles, pool boy, things like that to help as well. But it's more about getting good technique over time rather than just swimming harder, swimming faster. Because the gain from improving fitness and swimming is so, so small. But um, getting technique better is, is the thing that's going to improve your swimming. But coming back to what we said with all this stuff and what I kind of used to quite like with this, is that for a lot of people, they just need to get better at pacing. If they can get better at pacing, they're going to be able to hold their technique better. They're going to get more time spent with good technique. That's going to improve their swimming. That's going to make the difference. So, uh, yeah, hopefully there's some interest in there. Certainly quite uh, quite interesting when I had a look back. Uh, maybe I'll start using it again at some point um, within stuff. But if anybody's got any questions from CSS stuff, I'm certainly happy to kind of um, chat through anything like that from there. But yeah, thanks for listening.